Hey everyone, today's video I'm going to be showing you how I've used my newsletters to fine tune the open source Llama 3 model that just came out and how I'm going to be using it in the future. So let's talk about the process that I did to actually fine tune the model and then I will show you each step in more detail. Alright, so I just wanted to go over the sort of flow that I've come up with that I think is pretty straightforward. So following along with the notebook that is provided by a company named Unsloth, they let you fine tune models faster. They created an open source Google Collab notebook to help people fine tune Llama 3 models without really needing to know a whole lot. And so following the process, essentially what I'm doing is I'm first loading in the base Llama 3 model and then I am loading in the Alpaca cleaned data set to fine tune it on that first. I'm then saving the model to my Hugging Face account. And then I am going to load that new model into a collab notebook and do the same process that we did in this first part. But I'm instead going to be using the new model that we saved. And then for the data set, I'm going to be using my custom data set of my newsletters then I'm going to fine tune that and then I'm going to save it. Okay, so that is essentially what it is. And so let me show you the tool that I use to first scrape my newsletters and then we will get into the collab notebook. So I use this tool or platform called Appify. It's essentially a web platform that lets you find different web scrapers that are pre-built. And so I use one called the Website Content Crawler, and I use that to scrape all of the newsletters from my Beehive. And once I've done that, I exported the results as a JSON file. And then I had to format it into the format that is required for fine-tuning the Instruct Llama 3 model. And so I'm going to show you what that looks like really quickly, and then we will continue. So this file right here is the data set that I'm using for my newsletters. And as you can see, it has three keys in each JSON object. So there's the instruction, the input, and the output. And so the instruction is sort of like showing the model an example of like what somebody would say. And then the output is what we expect to return as a response. And so I left the input blank because these are not really meant to take in any other input other than the actual instruction. Otherwise, maybe you could say, you know, repurpose this newsletter into a thread and then put a newsletter as input and then show an example output. But for my purposes, I only want to use it for coming up with drafts of newsletters that I could potentially write faster. And so I just want something where I can say, hey, write a newsletter about this, 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 and then it gives me a draft that is more in my tone of voice and talks about things that might more match what I would actually talk about. And then what I did is I uploaded this to Hugging Face. Hugging Face is a platform for AI developers to collaborate, upload data sets, models, and use them for their own purposes. So if you want to upload your data set to Hugging Face after you make an account, you will simply just click New Data Set name it test create the data set and then when you go over here to files and versions you will add the uh, the JSON file of your custom data set and that's kind of like part of the setup that you need to know so I hope that helps and now let's go to the collab notebook for the first round of fine-tuning Okay, so now we are on the Collab Notebook. I will leave a link in the description for this as well. And this is open source, so you can find this on the Unsloth GitHub as well. Um, and I've already run this, but I'm just going to walk through each part of the step and show you what we're doing. So first, we're going to be importing all the dependencies. And then in this step below, we are going to load in the base model. Then we create the model using the fast language model dot get PEFT model. <laughs> um, and then here's where the data prep uh, 
portion comes in. So as you can see here, we are creating a prompt where it's saying it blows an instruction that describes a task. And so it's like the instruction input and response. And I am first going to be fine tuning it on this data set called Yama Alpaca Cleaned. And this is, as it describes in the notebook, a filtered version of the 52K original Alpaca data set, but they made some tweaks to address some of the issues with the previous data set and the final result of the fine tuning. So once I've loaded in the data set, I will train the model and I've set it to max steps 60. Uh, you can do longer. You could even comment this out and you could use a num number of epics to train as well. I found that it takes quite a bit longer when you start using this instead of the max steps. So if I use like num train epics or epics equals four, it usually took quite a bit of time. So I would recommend first starting with uh, max steps equals 60 just so you can get it faster and just see what you're working with to see if you even like the results. Once I do that, I am going to train the model. <laughs> and then we are going to test it with the inference. So right here, you can see that we're actually going to uh, test what the fine tuning actually looks like. And so I don't know if you really need to say write a newsletter on tips for prompting Claude like I did here because we haven't fine tuned on the newsletters yet so it's not really you know worth it but it's just more so to see that it's actually putting out something and then once we're done with the inference a little bit lower in the notebook I'm just not going to show you because I have my API key down there but there is a cell to save the model to hugging face and so what you need to do is replace the uh, the placeholder where it says token and you're going to go and find a token from your hugging face account by going to settings in hugging face and you'll go to access tokens and you will generate a new access token uh, and make sure that it's allowed to write to hugging face as well so it can actually save the model And cool. So after we've saved that model, we're basically going to run through all the same steps, except instead of loading in the llama model, we're going to load in the model that I saved. So that will be from Hugging Face. And we run through the same process. Uh, ignore these errors. It's because I'm disconnected from the collab notebook right now. Um, and then when we go down to the data prep, instead of loading in the alpaca data set, we're going to load in the newsletter data set that we uploaded to Hugging Face earlier, and we're going to fine tune it. And once we do that, we train the model, and then we test the inference. So when we go down a little bit further, I say write a newsletter on tips for prompting the Claude 3 LLM model to better write tweets, and it puts out this response. So. I have two Claude threads where one is me just testing out this prompt zero shot and seeing what the regular Claude model comes up with. And then the other one, I just kind of copy and pasted the response and told Claude to reformat it so I could read it. So now we can compare what it looks like when we have just a base model and then a fine tune model on our newsletters. So let's compare. All right, so the first one is me just saying, write the newsletter, and this is what it came up with. So, dear Twitter enthusiasts, in this newsletter, we'll explore effective strategies for prompting Claude 3, yada yada. Be specific, concise when prompting, provide context. And so it's pretty basic. And if you compare that to this formatted response that we got back from Llama 3, I find this to actually be a bit more in my writing style. And so you can see it's a bit longer and it's separated with what I assume these would be the headers. And it's using listicles because it knows that I'm using listicles in my newsletters. And yeah, that is basically the process. So the reason that I wanted to do this is because I'm always trying to think of every part of my content creation process where I can 
save a little bit more time or just make it more effortless for me to actually create the content. So what I imagine in my head is I'm trying to come up with a newsletter idea and I have no idea what I want to write about. Now I have a model that is fine-tuned on past newsletters, so it kind of knows my writing voice, it knows how I would talk about things, and I can just say, write a newsletter about this topic, and then I can see what it puts out, and now I have some base content to work off of and kind of get the ideas flowing. So now once you've saved your own model, it's hosted on Hugging Face, you can deploy it there and you can call through an API if you are technical, or you can just load it into a collab notebook and you can load the model from Hugging Face and just make the inference inside of the collab notebook. So that is the video, guys. I just wanted to show you what is possible now, and I'm very excited with all the new models that are coming out. I think open source is really kind of tightening or closing the gap with these closed sourced companies, and my prediction is that eventually open source will surpass because it just moves so much faster and there's more people you know getting their hands on it playing with it and finding new ways to improve the models uh so if you like the video drop a like drop a comment if you have questions i will leave links to resources i discussed in this video below and you can also join my free school hackers and painters where we talk about all things content creation automation ideation with ai to help you become a one-man studio and that is the video, guys. So till next time, much love and peace, y'all.